want you to come with me on this journey as we tour the country, as we tour the different platforms and hear what the consumers had to say and see how the engagement went. Between 20, 23rd June 2023 and to date, when we report today, we are able to conduct several platforms ranging from uh, consumer forums in consumer help camps in different villages. We are able to conduct several radio talk shows on different radio shows. At the Commission, we have uh, ability to speak a uh, cross-section of, of languages across the country. We are able to conduct road shows in several locations around the country where we go to, to engage people in their gardens, in their shops, in their salons, in their vehicles, on the streets, in the bars, to get that one-on-one -on -one feel, to get the confidence, to get their issues, to get to them to understand that uh, the Commission and the entire region engage the consumers on the biggest menace of the year. The biggest, if there's an award for menaces, I think the menace of the buffet or fraud stars would steal the, the big prize. But we've not slept as UCC, as uh, communications regulation of both that policy uh, regulation and service provision of our partners. We've driven the campaign called the, the Tolfera campaign, and this is basically to empower the consumer with three key points on how to identify the buffet on how to deal with it. First point is ignore, second point is report it, and lastly, avail information to whoever may be vulnerable to a similar development happening to them. So the issue of the Tolfera, the buffet campaign, we've fought it, we fought it, it is evolving, it is evolving, but we're not giving up. We shall continue to fight it, but we're happy to register that in the year that we conducted this campaign, at least there's increased suspicion or doubt among us, the public, when a loose call comes from somebody alleges to be giving you something beneficial, there's a registered uh, um, apathy or doubt by consumers that mm, probably this is not true, probably this is, but they will do some due diligence to verify the information that is coming through. Yes, we know the menace is still there, but at least the, the incidence rate has gone down as registered by the Commission. Of course, the last one is how to lodge a complaint. Any concern, our toll-free number 0800-222-777 is all over the place. Yes, we are not yet there, but at least in the campaign done, we've gone some from step one to step two to step three to make sure the contact point for consumers is raised for them to know that I can engage, I can verify, I can lodge a complaint, I can get clarity on the key issue through our call center and the, our toll-free number thereof. We're able to promote the consumer helpline at operator level, that is the 100 at all networks, whether Airtel, Leica, MTN, or UTEL. Our headline projects, the big projects, the big interventions of the last one year, the biggest one being the SimClear campaign, were able to drive this campaign to raise sensitization on how to identify the phone and the dangers of using a fake phone. One, you report your phone gets stolen, you don't know how to get it. Once you know the serial number of your phone, we, the phone can be protected and therefore we, the, the campaign aims to make the issue of stolen phones in the country a history. So under the SimClear campaign, we're able to raise sensitization on that. We're able to raise awareness on how to verify. We're able to calm the villages of Fuweju, Zombo, Patongo, Kihihi, Kitabwenda, Kulambuli, Bududa, every corner of the work of the country, and we're able to engage 18 million Ugandans to give them basic information on the issue of the fake phones. The Youth in ICT is another campaign that in the course of the one year we were able to kickstart, and this is primarily to promote and protect the users of, of for ICTs in future. The youth are the future users, they are the future decision makers. So the Youth in ICT project has started, or the program has started, and this is basically for online protection and then promoting the better usage of ICTs. Again, aligning it with our theme for this year, which is promoting impactful ICTs. So the World Consumer Rights Day is another platform that we promoted in the course of the year. And this has taken us places, taken us to different, took us this year, took us to different locations of, of uh, again, southwestern Uganda, the different villages and the different platforms, using radio, using roadshows, using mini workshops, using uh, public fora, using uh, one-on-ones and then joint partnerships with our sister agency. The impact of all the above cannot be underestimated. We speak today, the UCC and its management will tell you that we've been able to register more or increased access to consumer uh, redress mechanisms, 
using our toll-free number and, and all other social media and direct engagement of consumers. So there's increased consumer registering of issues of complaints. Again, UCC and the management will tell you that through all the above engagements, direct and indirect in the course of the year, the Commission has registered increased easy access to consumer redress. We have better coordination and we have more registered more engagement activities with sister regulatory agencies on areas of course mandate on issues of uh, capacity supporting each other on where we lack capacity and understanding the regulatory spaces of each other again we have a better relationship with the consumer focus organizations and indeed different activities have already been conducted and many more have been lined up for the coming year it is now again here in Kavale. it is a full cycle at the 14th edition of the Consumer Parliament. And again, now through our partnership with the Federation of Small and Micro -enter Enterprises, the FSME, we're able now to look at the informal sector and the small and micro enterprises as we drive the impactful agenda, the digital transformation agenda. We look at the small sector, which is employing the mass, the masses of our country. So, Border Border Rider, Saloon Lady, Mobile Money Agent, Motembe, Makanika, mention them. We are ready to listen to you and make your phone, TV, radio, and many others a better tool for your life and your welfare, you and your family, and our beloved motherland, Uganda, promoting impactful ICTs. Wishing you a fruitful 14th communication consumer parliament for God and my country. Thank you. Um, uh, we started off on a bad note, but bear with us, we got something. There's a better edited version. I'm told the sound of this was not very good, and um, that's why I'm now using this microphone. The other one was not doing me justice. But a glimpse of what we've gone through. Okay, thank you for the clap. Yes, um, those who are joining us live on TV, on NTV, you're most welcome, and online. You're most welcome. We are in Kavale for the 14th edition of the Communications Consumer Parliament under the theme Promoting Impactful ICTs. We welcome you and you'll be part of the discussion as we move on. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me hand the floor back to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a clap to the representative of the regulator. Uh, thank you. I also want to add to his voice and welcome the, those that are following us online and on TV, that is on NTV and inform you that this is the 14th edition of Communication Consumer Parliament, and we are live from the National Teachers College, Kabali. And uh, if I may break down what he said and what we watch in the video, in Nirunyankole Ruchiga, yali kuchizao kwele kangu, bon karujuleta, bashomesize abanya Uganda, kandu wabase kuika ahabantubara ika milioni makumia yabili, para bashomesa abuhereza gwebya communication ninga ebya mpulizi ingana kandi ekibachikozire bakozireho campaigns ninji nka ezi ali kutushoborolera kandi uh, abas ya yonjira ya jirangu babase koraho kwatanisa ne bitongole bitali mwe na bimwe kandi wale barubajwanje hanuya hari bitongole ebi byaita service providers ebi nebira twisaho obuhereza Wonka UCC, Bobby Batarabasa Kujang Batuiso, Hereza, Kamweha Kandi, Nicho, Bat Kozirhen Kwata Nisa, Nebi Individongole, Kujang Vase, Kuisa, Obu Hereza, Abantu, Abanya Uganda, Aha, Buga UCC, Kandi, Echinichindasa, Kugambo, Echia Gamba, Yachabo, Ketchitongole, Baba Sekule, Wuza, Obu Herezo, Obebi Tongole, Biratuisa Ho, Burioni, Bujenda Kurunji, Ninga, Obu Hereza Burunji, ya gamba nkaha masimu gebi chupuli ya gamba nukutuwalizi no bukakubi kwa consumers ninga itwe abara benefitinga paka tungo buhere zobge so in a nutshell that's uh, what I can say about his presentation in Nunyankole Ruchiga and uh, we only have uh, uh, around two reports and I'm going to request the service providers the one who is uh, going to present on behalf of the service providers to come through and come to the stage and present their report and he's also actually talking about the issues that were raised from the 13th parliament. I will inform you that I will give you just 20 minutes. The regulator has given more minutes because they are regulators. So the representative, please.
come through and give your report. Mr. Speaker, sir, that's my first time saying that word. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, and uh, I'd like to recognize you, sir, the Honorable Minister, Dr. Chris Bayomos, the Executive Director, and all protocol observed in the, in the interest of time. My name is Kenneth Kazova. I'm the Vice President of Star Times, but I'm representing the service providers in the television industry. I had sent in a summary of the points that I wanted to, uh, to share with you from the concerns that came from you. I would like to quickly address the fact that I'm representing decoder-based television. And these stakeholders will be Star Times, Multi-Choice, Azam, and Zuko, plus the Free Air Fraternity, which is represented by NAB. So these complaints came through, and the areas of interest were as follows. The pricing challenges. As paid TV service providers, we are sincerely grateful to you, our members who are consumers. We appreciate you because you stick with us in the hardest of times. We sincerely acknowledge the difficult economic environment in which you, we all operate. That is the reason this industry has kept the price changes at the very minimum. I know that you have raised the issue of price changes, but compared to the other commodities and services, television services have really kept their price changes at the very minimum. We need to remind you that we have little control of the costs of operation that we deal with as an industry. Extremely hard and difficult and delicate to, 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 to balance the cost of operation with the interest of controlling the prices. However, we have tried to keep it as stable and less regular as possible. Signal challenges. Many of our subscribers find a challenge in understanding the signal-related limitations. And all, cust all customers, they, all they understand is that they have paid and they don't have a signal. That's all they understand. However, sometimes the challenges are really not, they are beyond our control. For instance, in the service of the antenna system, where you are receiving the signal, through the antenna. Sometimes there is an obstruction. Sometimes there is a physical obstruction that challenges your signal. And all you need to do is to adjust your, your, your antenna. Sometimes in the DTH service, which is uh, what you people call uh, satellite, or the H1, when that signal comes direct from the satellite which is not hosted in Uganda. When there is a challenge in weather in the host countries, it affects your reception at home. So whereas you can be mad that you are not receiving the signal and the service provider is not doing a good job, the truth is that the technology cannot overcome the weather at that particular point. So we seek that sometimes you understand that the failure in signal is a failure that is beyond our control as service providers. However, many of these can be 
corrected or explained if you keep in touch with our customer care lines. Technology upgrade. The world of television has not been spared by technological changes and innovations. When the rest of the world progresses on to another level, as Uganda and as service providers, we cannot stay behind. So therefore, we usually have technological upgrades in our softwares. Many times, some of these upgrades are major and sometimes they impact your service provision. If the upgrade is major, is major most likely your decoder service will be interrupted. However, many times this can be corrected by a reset of your decoder. So when this happens, we encourage you to please contact us so that we can help you to reset your decoder. Because we cannot fail to upgrade the software. And sometimes we're also keeping up with the security threats. I think you had the Bafere campaign. Even us were affected. So every time we have to upgrade so that we can challenge those who are tampering with our decoders. But also, it is simply a technological upgrade that we cannot avoid. avoid. Delay in connection after subscription. You do realize, or you may realize that many of our subscribers, you members, use uh, telecom money services uh, to reload your subscriptions. The system is such that when a subscriber makes a payment, a telecom company deducts the money from you, the customer. The telecom company sends us instructions or sends the sub -tel television company instructions to reconnect. And upon receiving instructions, the pay TV effects the reconnection. But please note that these are two separate institutions. It is only the machines who are talking to each other. So therefore, when there is a problem, many times there can be a delay in the communication. And on very rare cases, there can be even failure in the connection of the service. In the event that this connection, this connect, this connection was delayed, or even failed, and yet the money was deducted, the reversal process has to be effected. However, it is very important to note that the reversal process is not as fast because it involves judgment and verification. Whereas the system was set to deduct quickly, when it is going to reverse whether there was a mistake or when there is a mistake, there has to be someone who verifies whether the reverse is necessary. And that slows down the process. In the meantime, as a customer, you may, not, you may be mad at the service provider because you're not getting your refund immediately. But it takes time. And please understand that that's the system. That's how it works. We can work on improving the technology and making it faster. But sometimes it's not inefficiency on the part of the service provider. Why do we pay for free-to-air channels? I'm actually responding to your questions. The design of pay TV platform is such that as service providers, we, mob we mobilize different content, different content from different sources, put them together in one box, and then we provide it on a, on a pay. That's how we do business. We collect content from different people. We put it in one source where you can access it at a fee. So without the subscriber paying for the content, there is no survival for pay TV. So the only way we can survive is when we charge for our service. It does not make business sense for any pay TV provider to carry free channels. However, the, the law provides that you must be able to access at least one channel, which is UBC. But for the other channels, it does not make business sense for us 
to provide them for free. Because the truth is, that's the business that we do. Incompatible accessories. There's a big challenge that comes with a, a, a number of complaints that come with service, with the service, the quality of service. When we visit complainants who are complaining about the signal, you'll find a combination. A decoder is from Star Times, the remote control unit is from GoTV. You're left with two minutes. The cables are from Azam, the antenna is from somewhere in Katwe. The challenge is that whom do you blame for the poor quality? We encourage you to please buy accessories from recommended sources. Only then can we be responsible for the final quality. Finally, tampering with decoders. We get many complaints, Mr. Speaker, where someone is complaining that he's no longer receiving the service. But when you investigate, you find that someone tampered with a decoder. And these are the buffet that we're talking about. They come to you, they ask you for some money, and they promise you to subscribe for a year at a very cheap cost. Now, we do not know those moves. We do not know those packages. So our systems do not recognize those packages. They can work for one month or two months. But after that, when we do our system reset, your decoder will be left out. So you'll complain that you're not receiving the signal. And most of the time, if not all, Mr. Speaker, when we ask the consumer to bring the decoder so that we can check on it, they never bring it. Because many times they know what they did was wrong. I'm afraid your time is fast spent. Uh... I'm actually done, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I'm just encouraging the members to please keep in touch with us on our customer care lines. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, the representative of the Decoder Best TV. I don't know whether we have someone from the other providers, service providers, because uh, you have not talked about the telecommunication service providers. So if there's anybody, I can give you just uh, five minutes to wrap it up. Mr. Speaker, the Minister, the ED protocol observed. Mr. Speaker, I will, before I even start speaking, I will request for more time because what I'm going to discuss will need an extra five minutes as opposed to the five that you had given us. So my name is Jude Alom. I'm from Leica Mobile and I'm representing the telecom operators. A few years back, we've received several concerns from our customers. And today, and the previous, uh, can I stand down? Yeah, so today, we are here to clear some of the concerns. But particularly, we picked out data consumption because it is a key to impactful uh, promo pro promotions of ICTs. So today, the points that I'm actually going to talk about are why is data bundle, why is my data bundles running much faster than before? Two, why do data bundles expire? Data is expensive in Uganda. Why do data bundles disappear? Fixed line concerns. We shall have actions taken and possible solutions. Uh, we shall also highlight the common consumer concerns. And I will summarize with takeaways. Let's go. Yeah. So why is my data running out? 
Why is my data running out much faster than before? As you realize, we all have smartphones, and as opposed to other services and products that we provide as telecom companies, for data, for it to work, you have to enable it on your device, as opposed to voice and SMS. So where our consumers are saying, I was sleeping and I woke up, when my data has gone, has run faster. I did not use it, but you had actually enabled your device and given a command to it to update its software, to provide you uh, updates on weather and other updates. So we are saying, in the background, you are having other applications that are running on your device. Yeah, and if you went to your phone settings, especially applic uh, apps on your data apps on the settings, you'll be able to see all these applications. You could try it out as we discuss. You'll be able to see that you have running applications in the background that you are even not aware of. These are some that you had opened earlier or even a few days back. Let's go to the next question. So, uh, yeah, so as we talked about other apps, we're also saying the speed, the speed that network generation like 3G, 4G, and 5G will determine the, the, the amount of data that you'll be using. So for you who had a 3G a few months back and you promoted yourself to getting a 4G device or 5G, the, the consumption won't be the same. As you can see, we have one custom, the same customer who was using a 3G phone used up to 8.4 MBs in a browsing, one browsing session. The same browsing session with a customer who was using 4G and consumed 158.4 MBs. And the other customer who was using 5G consumed 516.2 MBs. So the more the speeds, the better, or the faster your, net, your, your data. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, better quality of videos. Better quality of videos. The better the quality of your videos, the more or the faster the data that you'll be using, or the more the data that you'll be using. For example, you could see uh, 1,080 pixels has, in the same per minute, has consumed 12.4 MBs as compared to the video of 240 pixels, which has used 1.6 MBs. Let's go. Yeah, why do data bundles expire? Data bundles expire because it is a regular telco prepaid product constraint being followed globally. And as we mentioned, besides being followed globally, we have, these are, we have products that actually have a validity period. And as a consumer is buying these products, you can actually know that this is, the, uh, the data that I'm buying is a daily bundle, a weekly bundle, or a monthly bundle. So this is something you're actually aware of before you even go to uh, before you purchase this bundle. Let's proceed. Same. So yeah, we have options available for our customers where we have Telux bundles. These are bundles that do not expire. Let's go. Can MTN go also has freedom bundles. Why data is expensive, more expensive in Uganda? Let's go. Yes. Why data is expensive? in Uganda. Yeah, when you say something is expensive, it means you're comparing it to another thing. So we are saying, when we did, uh, according to our research, you realize that Uganda has the cheapest data, which is less than one USD in sub-Saharan Africa. You can look at the graph. You'd see a country like North America, it has four point, it, the price is $4.98 per GB. And if you look at that graph, 
we are actually at a fair side than those countries. Let's go globally. Let's go. Yeah. When we also compare it to the price of commodities, despite the challenges of COVID, wars, currency depreciations, we have not increased data for a long time. But you could see the price of commodities going up on a daily basis. So we believe it is not an issue of data being expensive, but maybe affordability, which... <laughs> Thank you, the representative of telecommunication companies. I'm afraid the time is up. Could you give me two minutes? That is allowed one minute. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Yeah, so these are some of the common consumer concerns. SIM swap and SIM registration requirements, data depletion, slow speeds during peak hours, uh, fraud issues, network coverage. These are some of the concerns that we receive. But like we are here today, we are, we are ready to actually address some of these challenges as we proceed. Because uh, we do not have much time to explain all this. But later in the session, maybe Mr. Speaker would give us the opportunity to answer some of these queries. Let's uh, close. Uh, thank you very Take much. Away. I believe some of those concerns will come in the plenary because there are issues that are actually peculiar to this region that I know are concerned with some of those ideas. I want to thank you, and uh, thank you. please I request that you take your seat. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, those are service providers, and I know more to talk about will come from you during the plenary session. Uh, but if I can talk sa about some of the things that they talked about, Dunyankore Luchiga, Ababa Nzaho, Omushizo Ababa Nzaho, Yalu Gamba into Bia TV, Kandi Yal Pujirangu, Ebisbebi wa atunji le kurugamu pali ya menti yukumi ni shatu Baka wuzi bugangu habugenchi ebe ya TV ninga dikoda Subscription eleva e, ine mwebi zivo esete zile yonjera Konka ya jezo kuchishoboro wali kuchirangu uh, Wako mpia linga nagand mahanga na nguanezi nebindi bintu products uh, TV wote wako njesa gaho uh, subscription yabo uh, Gamba na hachi ntusha signal Ngu signal habugenchi la chila kuvora avura kandi yatshora ari kugira ngo ubwiro bwinji cyatuma signo yabura bumwe nabo kiracira barenze mikono kiraruga nko munsiza hero ait signo ziraruga ninga bumwe shange nko muyagagwija dish yawe yeta sibire kurunji gukirangise orubajoro tarirwe ninga bumwe nke bikona byaguma biremereraho umwe ushange byagiteganisa then yagamba na chintu cha update ninga enkura kurana ya technology Bureau of Ginji to Ravan is a moment to be a TV, a Vokuchirango, Koku technology, like Miracura Kurana, Nabio, Viracura Kurana, Oshange, Charavan is a mo of Heres of Wotuide, or Rajachi, or Atunga. Wagamba Masimu, Yagamba Chin to Chadata, Tindamania, Okumobuza, Murazak Mobuza, maybe a Chamo by Romani, Ningo Mundi, where is Akunka, Esirayaj Taridata, Kandi Yagamba. Ngu have gained data data, it was a cause, it was a home, no longer. Yeah, she was a little bit of 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 a little Genchi data ya nje agenda konka oyebwangu harihoza application eziri mu simu ezira nywa data yawe then ya ari kugamba kushobora habwenchi eh, data turajira ninga abanya Uganda baleto mbitwangu ile expensive ninga ile higuru munonga mu Uganda kusinga gandi mahanga konka na cyo yashoboraho ari kugira ngo wa compare linga na mahanga gandi go mu East Africa nangwa nsiona data mu Uganda echali chip kusinga yo Mwebale Mnonga, that's how I can actually explain it in Yankori Luchiga. I am going to uh, request the representative of the consumer organization to come and uh, speak to us, and I request that you will take just 10 minutes. Thank you.
Right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomusi, the Minister for ICT and National Guidance. Honorable Nyomi Tembo, the Executive Director of Uganda Communications Commission. Uh, the Director for Industry Affairs at UCC. My fellow representatives from consumer organizations, SMEs here present. I'll take my 10 minutes to present on promoting impact Full ICTs among consumers with a focus on micro, small, and medium sized enterprises. Next. Next. And I'll talk about uh, um, the MSME sector. I'll talk about the federation. I'll talk about the importance of ICT for consumers, especially MSMEs. I'll mention some of the pain points that have been responded to, and then I'll make a few recommendations. Next. So these are the SMEs we are talking about. This is a tailor that we've supported through the digital uh, literacy program in collaboration with UCC. Next. SMEs are extremely important. They're the backbone to Uganda's economy. They create over 4.5 million jobs countrywide. They contribute over 80% to our gross domestic product. They are hotbeds for innovation. And they are forefront for tackling poverty among the youth and women. Next. So as a country, we have this vision 2040. Uh, next. And we want to move to a transformed, modern, and prosperous country by 2040. And for us to do that, we must have a knowledgeable and skilled workforce. And ICT is part and parcel of that process. We can't be competitive, we can't be innovative, we can't be skilled if you're not leveraging ICT for that purpose. Next. So these are, this, is the MS, this is the MSME description in Uganda. Most of the MSMEs have less than four employees and generate less than 12 million shillings uh, every year. And this is the focus of uh, this consumer parliament. Small businesses that employ between one to three to four to five individuals. Next. As a federation, our role is to support your small businesses to grow through advocacy. We also do it through training. We also do it through skilling. We want a conducive environment so that your businesses can grow and succeed. Uh, next. We want SMEs to grow. The challenge we have in Uganda is that most small businesses are not graduating. They are remaining micro, especially those that are run by women. 60% uh, of all MSMEs are women run. But the challenge is that these businesses are not graduating. They remain small forever. Now, we can't accept that. We want to ensure that these businesses are supported to grow, to become productive, and to create jobs. Next. These are some of the, we are, part of what we are doing is supporting, for instance, mechanics. How can mechanics be able to leverage ICT to ensure that they are able to grow their businesses? Next. I already mentioned 60% of all micro-businesses are women-run. So we must focus on women because if they adopt ICT, we, are, we will be able to see the growth that we want. I already said that 90% of all MSMEs are micro, informal sector, as we mentioned. And government strategies to ensure that we formalize the informal sector because that's the only way we can expand the tax base. And at this point, I want to bring in, recently we've had a, a run-in with URI on the issue of IFRIS. This comes to the core of formalization because if you, don't, if you don't adopt ICT, then ICT will find you. So the regulatory environment has adopted ICT and we the SMEs have not reached there. So when we met, the, when the Fed has met the president, he was actually educating them how to use the phone and so on. You see, digital illiteracy. Next. So for SMEs to grow, they must operate within a certain ecosystem. They must have access to good mentors, to financing. They must have access to uh, the right associations. They must have access to the right infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Next. Again, these are SMEs that we've supported. Uh, next, please. These are SMEs that we've supported through our uh, digital literacy programs. Now, how, can, how impactful can ICT be for MSMEs? I highlighted four issues. One, 
ICT can reduce transaction costs. It becomes cheaper. You don't need to move to a certain place to transact. It can improve communication. It can improve access to markets through the e-commerce platforms, and it can improve operational efficiency. Next. Some of these pain points we have captured from this week, from Chisoro to Kabale, but also through our experience. The biggest concern that MSMEs have lately is this issue of the premature depletion of data. I put data at night, in the morning I find it has gone away. And then I say my data has been stolen. They have tried to explain here, but maybe they need to explain it in a common man's language, isn't it? Sometimes that the science is too much that it becomes confusing. Uh, unsolicited calls and messages. You know, people send you messages, call you, you, th you as long, fast as you pick it goes off. Misinformation and fake news, you know? You go online, you see something, you think it's true, and then you discover it is not. Online fraud and cybercrime, people have lost money through fraudulent. People call you, I'm calling from you, see some so on. This is reducing, of course, as they've mentioned, but still a challenge. Next. Fake and substandard digital devices. You know, some, someone buys a phone and then later found that this is not a genuine device. Poor connectivity in Chisoro, the issue of connectivity is still a challenge. Unfair pricing by pay TV. Eh? You just increase prices with minimal consultation. Eh? So that is a complaint. Me, I'm just communicating, please. Me, I'm just a messenger. Excessive repetitions. Eh? You pay your TV, then they play the same movie. In the morning, at lunchtime, in the evening, tomorrow, the other day, then you say, what's the value? Eh? Pay TV people, please. Hmm? We, we need new content. Next. <laughs> Uh, then there's the issue of tracking stolen phones. Some are saying it takes long to track. If your phone is stolen, tracking it takes long and costs you money. Then there's the issue of people who want to replace their SIM cards. They say that sometimes when they go to police, they ask them to pay for police letter. I don't know if police is here, but this is something that you might want to tell us. Is it official or it's private pay? But this is a complaint that came up. And then there's also the issue of ind individuals sharing numbers. Eh? Someone calls you, it's your number, and then he claims it's his number. You know, so that's also something that was raised. And then finally, there are consumer SMEs and consumers who miss the SIM validation exercise, and they know that these SIMs will be disconnected, so they are asking for guidance on what they should do. Next. Uh, next. So we make some recommendations, only five of them. I think it's important that government continues to invest in rural ICT infrastructure to ensure that there's better connectivity. The issue of digital literacy and awareness is important. For instance, on issues of data depletion, this is a digital literacy problem completely and also. So we need to do more in this area. We need to promote digital device financing schemes uh, I know that as a federation, we have trying to cook something uh, with UCC, but there's a lot of need. I, I spoke to MTN yesterday. They also have a program in this regard. So we need to have more digital device financing schemes so that SMEs have smartphones. Let me ask, who has a smartphone in this room? Just put up your hand. If you have a smartphone, you see, half, half, uh, no, not the ministers and the <laughs> The SMEs, SMEs. Put up. Okay, it's like a quarter of the room. Eh? So th that is still a challenge. And uh, I think we need to simplify SIM card replacement and increase engagement between SMEs and service providers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the representative of SMEs. And uh, if I can uh, break down what uh, he was saying, uh, he was talking about uh, the SMEs. And Yari Kugamba have two Avara Kora Zabiznesi in Cheho, Avine Kasete Kache, 
nicho wa ali kugamba nkaba boda boda ali kugamba abara kora za chapati amwe na ba makanika kandi ya gamba ngo ali heshonga zimwe eziba gambireho kandi zi agamba ali kugira ngo we kuba bire bara gamba nabantu kuruga ku soro no muri kabale bagambire ha chintu cha data ku nkecho babacishobwireho ejo kugira ngo data yitu erakira kugenda juba kandi abandi bagambira kugira ngo barakira kwacira masimu road yaho otunge omuntu ari kuterera tora manyesimu neha isime ikera rugaho kandi otabaka basa ku muterero gundi murundi then bagambire hari uh, amakura guturakira kutunga ha masimu gitu gechi shobobo uh, oshango muntu yatunga amakuru nkali za whatsapp yaza kwicusa shange uh, gagwire then bagambire ndijo shonga iyo kugira ngo uh, wabari gure bintu amasimu za decoder barashanga mwe zigeze bicupuri kandi nacho bari kugira ngo abantu uh, service providers kugira ngo bachi improving ho then ya gamba echo kujira ngo okutracking ama simu ninga omuntu wa mwibaho nke simu yeye kuza kujitunga chira twaro bwire bwinji uh, ninjira yari kugamba ngo naba police ikora za kuronda esimu yawe aba police umwe barabuza kasete ko kujira ngo obase kutunga esimu yawe kugura ipapura biretengwa and kandi echo nacho yari kujira ngo nebi yatunjire kuruga mu bantu then haro Hari haba antu wara shanga vine namba, aine namba jine kunu, hari hono uli kampara na wajine, o shangara mutiri na mkandi kori koze se namba yanje. Echo nichi mge habi ya gamba. Deni ya, ya gamba hali esimu zita validate njide. Bukawa ndo wabara handi chisama simu, ngwari ho, abata handi chisama simu. Ezo nizi mge aha shonga, ezi watu njine mbantu, konga turaza kutunga akire, lero tubase kwa chire zini shonga kurugamuli mge abali hanoya. Uh, at this juncture, I want to recognize the presence of the Resident District Commissioner for Kavali District, Mr. Godfrey Nyakahuma. You're most welcome. He joined us with the District Internal Security Officer, Mr. Ruben Mutawazi. You're most welcome. And uh, let me have the opportunity to invite the ED so that he invites uh, the Minister to speak to us. There are some of the issues that have been raised in uh, these reports. and. Uh, uh, I think the minister will have uh, a chance to respond to some of them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Minister, sir, my friend, the RDC, Mr. Yakahuma, and our security officer who have just come in. I think now we agree, we are progressively, progressively agreeing that uh, these interactions are very, very, very important. The tidbits of information we are getting from the conversation before I invite the minister, I think confirms to the importance of these uh, interactions. Uh, a lot of perceptions, misunderstandings, which we can really um, uh, try to uh, solve when we interact in such uh, town hall uh, uh, meetings. For example, Mr. Minister, like even myself, I would like really the, the operators to break for us, this is saying that uh, we have the cheapest data in the world. I don't want to say, because facts are facts, but I would love to see a breakdown of this. I want to understand this one more. Myself, at my level, you can imagine. I want to understand this one more, that we are the cheapest. Is it a casual statement or, or is it a fact? I, I want to hear the, because really, if we are, I'll start putting on a T-shirt with these words on, on the back, front. I think I'll have a stick on my vehicle. Having this, this is something we need to drum up if it's true. So, I, but I want to understand it very, 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 very well. You see, I have two spaces, Mr. Minister, where I interact with the people. I know that uh, ED is uh, sometimes intimidating. There's that space. Uh, which gives a lot of information, but I know there are some people who don't want to go in that space. But I have another Twitter handle, at Nyombiluze. Eh? At Nyombiluze. That's where I interact, and I handle this one personally. And I've found out that is where I get real, real, real information from the Wanainchi. Like uh, some few weeks back, somebody was telling me, but sir, this data depletion, you, you are telling us... We are digitally illiterate. That's why 
We are doing this, this old, old technical explanation. But tell me how I buy data is for, the, for one month. I haven't used it. For example, I'm, I'm away, I've been sick, but it's depleted. Then we started the conversation and said, now let's, let's start comparing this with other spaces. You rent a house. You rent a house for a month. You pay your rent. Unfortunately, you fall sick. You are admitted in a hospital for one month. The fact is, and we are very, very sympathetic. You, you fell sick, yes. For one month, you didn't use the house. It is locked. You are not there. So what do you do? Really, can we blame the house owner for, demand, for demanding his next month's rent on account that the rent which I paid for the other month, sir, I fell sick and I, I, I did not occupy that house. Then, so, why am I saying this? I think we need to unpackage some of this information into a language that can be understood by a common, a common person, by a, our business people. When they say the, the data has expired, you ask them about the cheap, cheap, the cheapest ticket, an airline ticket. You'll find a ticket of $200, same journey, another $300, another $400. The cheaper the ticket, the conditions. And you have to be very careful. This very cheap, the cheapest ticket, if you don't appear at the gate, it's good. That's the condition. So we need to explain people to things that talk to what they can really, uh, what they can understand. But of course, we are continuing this, Mr. Minister. Because as you know, sir, one of our statutory obligations is a com uh, consumer empowerment. This is our core function, to make sure that we deal with the consumer, to make sure that they understand what's going on, to make sure that we listen to them and uh, communicate to the, to the operators, and to make sure that the operators and consumers are talking and the ground is leveled. So we'll continue with this. We have told you this is the 14th one. The 15th one is coming, the nth one will come, this will continue uh, until, of course, all issues can't be resolved. This is a going, a works in progress. We have to continue and continue all, all the time. What we ask from the consumer, let's be also factual. Be because when we bring emotions into these things, emotions, and sometimes in Uganda we love politics. We are politicizing everything. Everything is politicized. When you bring emotions, when you politicize some of these uh, things, it then it becomes a bit uh, difficult. Let's be factual so that we can deal with these uh, concerns uh, as they should be dealt with. Mr. Minister, sir, I was called here to invite you. Uh, join me to welcome the Honorable Chris Mario Munsi, Minister of ICT and National Guidance. Honorable Minister. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, the Executive Director, UCC, Honorable Nyombi Tembo, and the Senior Team from UCC, my friend, the RDC Kavale District, Mr. Nyakauma, and we got to know each other, not when he was RDC, but when he was still, we were still young boys, those good old days. We were still young and innocent. When I worked, when I worked in Fort Porto many years ago, so I am happy to see you and thank you very much for coming, the speaker and the other leaders of Kavale and the region, the service providers, the regulators, and all the partners who are here, and the most important, the you the audience, the people of Kavale and Greater Kigezi, we are happy to be here this morning here at the 
National Teachers College Kavale. Now, it is your day, you the people in the audience, to interact with us, especially the team from UCC, but also the other regulators like the Central Bank, and the others that like, have been introduced, the service providers, so that you pose questions to us, the kind of issues which you would want to raise, because probably you see the ED on the TV, the directors here from UCC on the TV, but now we are here in physical form, present. But I want to start by thanking all of you who have come? When the Maramanyo Rujungu abaria, ninga yvans bunuru chiga. Okay, let me. I will be brief, just in English, and I also go local. I want to thank all of you, particularly you, the audience, the people of Kavale, for turning up to have this engagement. Because if we had come from Kampara with UCC with this team, and then you don't come then we would have been frustrated because we came because we wanted to engage with you. So may I request the big people in the, pro, in the front, UCC and the regulators, to give an applause to the ladies and gentlemen who have come to be part of this conversation. And I want to salute the right honorable speaker who is the moderating very well. I want to thank you, sir, for being our speaker today. In the parliament, the parliament of Kampara, we have rules and regulations. One of the rules is that when you are in the parliament and you speak, you have immunity. Immunity means you can speak without fear of being taken to court. You speak freely. But of course, you speak respectfully. You don't rise and abuse somebody simply because you have immunity. So through you, Mr. Speaker, I would also want to confer that immunity that when we are discussing, feel free to raise any issue that has been paining you that you would want us, either the minister or UCC or one of these people here, the telecom uh, players here, the service providers, the regulators to answer. So you feel free. We are in the parliament to judge the government. We are not going to use the challenge. Our government is going to be in parliament. We are not going to be able to do anything. We are going to be able to do something. We are going to be able to do something. We are going to be able to do something. We are going to be able to do something. We are going to be able to do something. We are I have been quite in the and I hope to and presenting which was a book of your chance. You could have a Yamasimu, Harech Zibechi, Radio Z, Harech Zibechi, Television, Eribatia, Avokuba, Avakuraba, UCC, Avagovermenti, Nivova, you could have a Ra, a Biona, a Bia communication, a Let me. I remind everybody that when the NRM government came, some people say, why do you start with when the NRM came? Uganda was there, yes, but to you, we have NRM. When the NRM government came under the leadership of President Yoweri Museveni, we had only one radio station in Uganda called Radio Uganda. Actually, the people here in Chigezi, we used to pick the radio in Rwanda. I remember at home in Kanungu, the signal was Kiriara with the radio in Rwanda than Radio Uganda. We only also had only one TV, UTV, Uganda Television. Uh, even the print media was limited. Of course, we are social media, it was not there. The social media, this technology was not there. So government of President Yo M7 took a deliberate decision to liberalize and expand the media space so that the government 
can own many more media houses, but also the private sector can also own media houses. And that's why today we have over 300 radios in Uganda. I don't have many radios in Kavale town here. Are you using a radio in town here to Kavale? Eh? Eleven. Eh? Seven. Seven radios. Eh? Eight. And maybe more are coming. So you can imagine from a time when we only had the radio Uganda in Kampara, now we are talking of eight radios just in Kavale. In Kanungu, a small district, we have three, three radios. In the Kisoro, there are radios. In Rukunjiri, there are two or three. Even in Ruchiga, there's somebody who is broadcasting from Ruchiga, but he hasn't got a license yet. <laughs> but there is also one who is applying for, for one. I think Rwanda, Rwanda mainly uses the radios in Kavale. But I'm just demonstrating that over the years under NRIM, the communication space has expanded. TVs, it, you see how many television stations we have now in Uganda? 72. TV, TV, Now we have 72. Zaha TV, Shanju Naibiri, from Uganda. Utatiri mude online TVs. These days, every village has an online TV. When I'm in Kanunga, I see Kambuga online TV. But Chinchizi is the online TV. I don't know whether they have licenses from UCC. But even my village has a Kayungwe, my village called Kayungwe, online TV. So I am saying over the years, communication has expanded and life has become easier. Communicating now is much easier. Of course, even the print media, there are now many newspapers. And also there is this digital revolution that has made everybody a journalist with social media. It's now what we call citizen journalism. Anybody can go on a phone, write, and publish. And the whole world sees. Like I am here talking, people in America, because you are recording and sending, people in Australia may be listening to me. So communication has become much more easier than how it used to be. But of course, it also comes with its own challenges. Regulation. How do we regulate this communication, these many channels, media outlets, for us to use this communication for the development and socioeconomic transformation of society? And that's why government, through our ministry, put in place the Uganda Communications Commission to take the lead in regulating and providing guidance over the issues of communication. So we are happy to be here, to be interacting with you. The team has been in Chigezi in the last number of days, trying to listen out to what are the issues. And some of the issues have been presented by the people who have been on the podium. So now we have to the Hanu Yerizova, Nkaba government, Ruga Kampara Ministry, na UCC, Nava Kura Mukure Baba, Kujirangu Tuba Sekugani, Rahone Imwe. The Bia communication, yes, I, think, I see we are concentrating on telecom and phones, but it goes beyond that. The radios in the Kavale and the Chigezi, how are they performing? Are there things you'd want to tell us? Are they abusing the space on the radio? Now going into electioneering. I have had complaints of voices, people who abuse leaders on radios because some journalist who works on the radio hates the particular MP. I have got those concerns in the office. And then he goes on the radio and he, just abuses one of the leaders. We need to hear those because we have regulations, we have minimum broadcasting standards. The radios must be used for the betterment and development of society, the television, all these. That's why we are here 
kugira ngo tuhurire imwe abari kuri za radio abari kuri za tv abari koze sabi ya karimagezi nkeze simu nibizibuci ebirungi nibiha ebizibu nibiha ebi muri kwenda ku government ekoreho nibiha that's why we are here tinyine bwire bwinji otherwise nkabagambire ebi turukora ka government but we are committed and we are doing everything possible to see that we make Ugandans be able to enjoy their country. You are raising issues like connectivity. As a government, we have been laying what we call the national backbone infrastructure. Tuile turuku biara kebo Nyinga shuwaya Yoyo kuleta internet Yoyo ngovu in connectivity And uh, We now have money To extend that kebo Cover the whole country And even Do what we call last mile connections We connect the hospitals Schools And the other institutions So that internet and communication connectivity is available everywhere. But we also know places like Chigezi, the terrain is a little bit, I don't want to say hostile, that's how God created the area, but presents the challenges where if you use the technology of the fiber, you will get the internet and the connectivity shadows in some areas. Maybe you have network at this side of the hill, then the other side. Even the, the wrong word that we use of that. So as government, we are also working out a project as the East African community to have a satellite, a regional satellite, which we help pass supplement the existing technologies we are using to have connectivity everywhere. Because like we are laying the fiber, but it becomes a little bit costly to extend the fiber over Lake Victoria to the islands. But if you have a satellite, it will automatically cover the area. Mountainous areas like Chigezi, Bujisu, uh, Drenzori, if you have a satellite, then you cover those shadows where they are, you have a connectivity connecting everywhere. One of the challenges that uh, you also face, somebody was asking how many of you have a smartphone the cost of a smartphone. Uh, you know when the phones came, these mobile phones came, at first they were for the rich. It was a status symbol having a phone. And those days in the late 90s when the phones had come, and he wanted to show it, but he has a phone. He was proudly now talking, proudly at the guy there, but he wanted the people to show. But now, a phone has been demystified. Demystified. You can't say I have a phone and you proudly say I'm rich. No. Even somebody who is looking after goats in the field has a phone. But of course, the phones are different. They are having like a katochi. But now with many of these functions we use on the phone, you need a smartphone or a smart device to transact. And we've been working hard to see that the cost of a smartphone or a smart device goes down. One way of addressing it, we've been trying to see how to remove or limit the taxes, because taxes are one of the elements that raises the cost. But we are also discussing with technology companies as a region to attract those companies to come and manufacture and assemble these devices from Uganda and within the East African region. For instance, we have a Chinese farm in Mbale which manufactures phones from Mbale. These mobile, and their price, the other day I launched their phone in Kampara, their price is quite low. There's another one, Namanve. Simi, which assembles also phones and uh, laptops, iPads, and the price is also low. 
So we are trying to see that we attract these companies to come and manufacture these phones, computers here in Uganda. And then the price will come down. Plus other measures. And the price is coming down. How much now is a smartphone here in Kabale? Simu za smart, urajukula zingahe. Ya mache kukira kora yone yule. Not like the one who owner of Tembo has. Yes, I see. Is in the range of uh, millions, four million shillings. Ah, but the yama shekuru kabali ragura zinga, two hundred thousand. Mitoro makunya abiri. A few kawadu here you go, they were like at one million, but the price is coming down. Our target as a ministry is that the next one year we want to reduce the cost to. 40,000 shillings. Jangwe simu ya smart ujita ametuwa lena. So that uh, even my sister in the village can also have a phone. So we are doing everything. Na data even the cost of data which you are talking about. Kumu ya sheka. At least yaza ametuwa lena uri omwe. Bulimu chiga na wala kuwate simu ya... Katochi Muraziru Gaho, Tuza Asimu, is a smart. And why we want everybody to afford a smartphone, a smartphone now has become an office. Because I am seated Let's here. Have order. I am seated here. Why I'm insisting on the cost is that a phone now is not a phone for communicating on voice alone, but it's an office. I have just been seated here, but I've been sorting out some things in the office in the Kampala, just using a phone. I even paid fees for somebody when I was here. I just got money from my account, because you can withdraw from your account. I put the money on the phone and paid fees. Somebody in Nibuyanja, there's a young boy I heard in Nibuyanja in Nirukunjiri when I was here. So a phone the functions are more than just talking. And that's why now you can be seated here. If you're a businessman, you order for items from China. Without, you don't have to fly to China now to buy things. You can just order your items from Guanzu. They will come and be delivered here in Kabale, just using a phone. You don't have to get into a bus to go to Makere to do a degree. Or... Barara or where you can just in your house, your sitting room, do a degree just on your phone. Do you know that? So now you can do many things just using these smart devices. That's why we want them affordable so that life can be much more easier. Like I said, I don't want to say much, I want to do more of listening from you so that we can know the issues which we must address as people who are in those positions and also assess whether we are doing a good job. So, we have a good job. 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 So, thank you very much. Once again, I appreciate UCC. We wouldn't want to sit in offices in Kampala but it's always important that we get it down to the people who consume our services and listen to them. So please tell us where you think we must improve. And our technical teams that are speaking, you behave like Jesus. Jesus is God. He was in heaven, but he left heaven and came down on earth. So let's not use this. the tough serious scientific jargon is let us simplify the language we come from heaven and come down on earth so that we explain to these people like he, he was saying when you say the, the data in Uganda is the cheapest put it in the language and convince these people that we are doing better uh, you had a complaint that the, the pay TVs the DSTV, the Star Times, that the price is a little bit high. Why? I know I've also received that complaint in the office. 
give us a comparison how is it in Tanzania how is it in Kenya how is it in South Africa is it true that we are overcharging Ugandans or there is a formula that you use to get the rates which are uh -huh. when you are computing those prices do you look at the ability to afford by Ugandans, these people in Kabale, so you need to put it in a simpler language for people to, to understand. Otherwise, I am happy to be here. Let's continue with the conversation. For us who have come from the ministry and UCC, we would want to hear more from you, so that if there are issues we must respond to and answer, we answer them here. If there are issues which we must take up in the government, we take them in the parliament, in the government. If there are laws which you want us to make, should we come up with new policies, new laws, you tell us, and then when we get into where we are, we make sure that we act so that all of us are happy as we consume these services. So, we have a speaker, we have so Ochiko Rugumizemu, Avaro Jureta, Vakama, Avari Sai Deji, Avobo Here Zavariaha, Ava Government, Ara Distina Timia, we are Kavale, we have a Mononga, Okuanuya, Kana Monongi, we have a member of Parliament. As in the cabinet, the way we are seated, this is the speaker. Usually on the right side is the government side. And the left is opposition. We don't worry about opposition. The way we sit in the parliament, the speaker sits. In the front, you have a cabinet. So I can say the regulators, UCC, and the service providers are the cabinet because they have to answer. To answer questions now, if for you, you are the members of parliament. We should check. Or we should go about you. How about your government? You go more show opposition, but I think it was once you have a free sitting. There is free sitting. So we would want, if time allows, to hear as much as possible from you. We should have a minimate to Kora. We are so clear on Jera. Kora J. Kora Ri. We have a Uganda. We should have a Mutunge. We have a Nichocha atureta, aha. Mwe bali mononga, wanga mwe na waherzo mujisha. Thank you, the Honorable Minister. Before you take your seat, I want uh, to request you to perform for us a function of handing over certificates to the service providers who are assisting uh, in the communication sector. And I'm going to request uh, Madam Julian to come and uh, preside over that activity. I heard the certificates, maybe one point I didn't raise. One of the concerns that we have in Uganda, that we have social media, but people are abusing social media. Social media, I'm speaking to you, but also we are on TV and Ugandans are following, that we would want to request Ugandans that let's use social media for positive communication, not to use it to insult others, not to use it to spread false news and lies and falsehoods, misinformation. I can be here, then somebody's writing a message that Dr. Christopher Yomusi is dead. What are you here talking? I don't you see it. Also. You have seen all these posts. But let me tell you that through UCC, we have technology that can trace and know who has originated such a message. Did you know that? We can. But we are also trying to get more technology that is going to help us to filter and manage social media. There are countries where social media has been banned. When you go to China, this WhatsApp is not there. They have developed their own local uh, medium of, of communicating. When you go in the Arab world, there is also very strict censorship.
So here, people are trying now starting to abuse that liberal atmosphere which government has allowed. So let's... And the difference is that for the regular media, say TV, radio, usually there are editors who control what gets out. The newspapers, before a story gets out, somebody has to look at it and allow it. But for social media, everybody is a journalist. So let's be responsible as we communicate using social media. But through UCC, we are going to get advanced technology that is going to control and regulate the use of social media. But most importantly, it is us, the users of social media, that should regulate ourselves and don't allow to post things which are offensive or things which can cause insecurity, things which can disrupt society. So we just want to caution Ugandans out there. But we are going to strengthen the way we regulate uh, social media communication. So, never monong. Mwena ninyirangu, mwewa social media, about WhatsApp, naza Twitter, ninga shi X, eka tukozese, okuhani, kano kugani, ilahaliza social media, tubikozese kurunji, okuombeka, eihangarige itu, tutabi kozesa, okujuma na, okuhani, kebi intu, bigwire, okuleta, kutahebi intu, biliku wasa kuleta, okutini sabantu, ninga shi, Tamaka shasha barumu bantu. Kuonkanka government kurabiru mshitongole cha UCC. Turiyo mshitonge biyoma. Ebi turakoze se. Tulangu tuawasa kuchenchura. Ebi kushohora ahaliza social media. Turuku bireta. Echukuru nitu wabari kujikoze sa. Aba shemire kule bangu. Naza kuhandike chintu. Nkachoe rezondi ijo chichire. Nyewebo kushinyohele za ni chinshemeza. Teja kubantu jukole sakubi. Muteja. Like the Lord's prayer says, don't lead us into temptation as a government. Kujirangu tushangin tuchinga za social media. Akwa ntuendaba nye Uganda, kujire freedom yoko communicate yoko gire buwena. Kwa katu communicate yoko runji, eje, majetawo nemi timba gano. These forums, tuzikoze se kurunji, abubu runji, buka atuena, abantu ba Uganda, Hali mune ito wachiga, na wanyachigezi wa kunuya wachigezi. Mwe wale munongo. Thank you, Honorable. Really appreciate your wise words. I had mentioned earlier that the last 10 days, the commission, along with our partners, have been in 94 different touch points, meeting consumers in the markets, um, the border points, in their stores, on the street. And I had you know, really thanked a lot of the service providers, our regulators, um, and the consumer advocacy organizations. But as a commission, we thought we would just thank uh, about eight of them specifically because the last 10 days they have been with the commission in these 94 locations. Um, we appreciate all those who managed to join us here today, but you know that this consumer parliament is really a roundup of all the different activities that we carry out in these regions, so we are not able to cover everything in one day. the last 10 days, Minister, So, please allow me. Please allow me to invite. MTN Uganda. Hatava Vunqueta, no one to be in a very cum. MTN Uganda, please.
mgeni chipanyisa mama tata na nyowe <laughs> back to the honorable speaker um, because the minister and the executive director might need to leave shortly I'm going to request honorable speaker with your permission to only allow three questions um, so that the speaker can you know permit uh, these three questions to come through and then we'll have them the three responded to and then the honorable minister and the executive director can leave at leisure. However, we will extend the question and answer session uh, longer with the permission of the speaker, where the service providers, the government representatives, the regulator, the consumer advocacy organization will be able to stay around and answer more questions. So don't think that these will be the last ones. Minister na, na executive director in a meeting Zezindi, na when we are not going to come, we are not going Then we are going to to go maha to go to the meeting. Back to you, Speaker. Yeah, thank you, Director. And uh, after all that function, we are going to the plenary, like she already said. We are going to receive for questions that will be answered. And I'm going to begin with uh, the anti counterfeit network. The one who is in charge is uh, supposed to come and give a question. I'm going to request the one uh, that has a microphone to uh, go to the people that have questions to ask. But as uh, that other person is coming, I want to recognize the deputy speaker of Kabale District, Mudisha Ronald, and the district councillors that are here with us. Uh, I also want to request among the service providers, the director of Voice of Chigezi, Canon Engineer Ivan Mbawazvatuma, you're most welcome, come, and all of you members. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My name is uh, Fred Muema. I'm from the Anti-Counterfeit Network. We bring together stakeholders who are affected by counterfeits, impacting, promoting impactful ICTs. According to us, counterfeits and substandard communication devices are preventing us from having impactful communication um, and technology uh, services. Whereas we may want to blame uh, my friends here from uh, the service providers, the telecoms, the broadcast, I think that we the consumers also need to take a blame because we are the ones who provide the market for the fake decoders, for the fake phones. Most of the TVs, Mr. Speaker, in the country are fake. They just get the, the shell and call it Hisense, but the motherboard and the internal organs, they're all made somewhere in Kampala and they just package. So those are the, the equipments we use. So. Um, Honorable Minister, the government is doing its best to ensure an enabling environment, but we need good regulation and good laws. That's why we are very grateful to the Communications Commission. As the Anti-Counterfeit Network, we are pushing for the Anti-Counterfeit Goods and Services Bill, which we are very happy to partner with UCC and other stakeholders. This law is defining for us what a counterfeit is, because we are the only country honor who didn't have a definition of what a counterfeit is. And this law is also increasing the punishment for the counterfeiting. It's now going to be 10 years if you are dealing in the fake devices and five times the price. That is the bill. We're having a national consultation in Kampala. We've been going around the country uh, with UCC. We've just come from Guru and Arua. But most importantly, why are we having these fakes in the community? However, the problem is that the consumers cannot differentiate between the genuine and the fake. The fake techno looks like the genuine techno. The, the fake iPhone, we have a lot of fake iPhones. We want to be stylish so we get these, so we can't differentiate. The other issue is affordability. 
Honorable, I heard you saying 40,000. You want each one to have a phone, 40,000. But price is causing a lot of fakes to come onto the market because we are very price sensitive. The people of Shigezi, the people of Busoga, where I come from, we like things on a bargain. But cheap things are expensive. Uh, government, you just put a cancer center in Imbarara, which serves this region. Why are you putting the center here? Because we are having more people falling sick. We are all sick because of the counterfeits we are using. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, I've been seeing a, a big topic here on my data. Data is getting lost. Data is being stolen. Data is being used. And uh, you've tasked the operators to explain. But I'll tell you, as somebody experienced in fighting counterfeits and substandard, the fake phones we have affect the quality of the service. They affect the functioning of the phone that you're holding. So the fake phones that we have, the fake devices that we have, are contributing to the loss of your data. Because a fake phone, its software malfunctions. It is easy for it to get software glitches, malware, all those issues. So if you have a phone which is fake, the chances of you losing data is high. 30, so, sec 30 seconds, so, Council. So I am proposing uh, to UCC, our partners, that the Simu Clear campaign, which is intended to help get rid of the fake communication devices, should actually be implemented so that a lot of the things that the consumers are suffering from, loss of data, price of this and that, can be handled. Otherwise, I'm very happy, Mr. Speaker. It's my first time to attend the Consumers Parliament. This is huge, 300, 500 people here. It is a fantastic thing, and we need to have more and more of this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, I want to welcome those following us online and on TV, and uh, I want to inform you that uh, our hashtag for this parliament, the 14th parliament, is uh, uh, CCP14. I'm going to now turn to the audience, and I'll request that when you get a microphone, you just ask one question. One question. Yes, you can raise up your hands if you have anything to say. Yes, we can receive from the director, voice of Kigezi. Uh, thank you, Honor, uh, right to speaker. I think I have like one or two questions. Uh, I wear a hat of also tourism matters also I'm in uh, uh, tourism, uh, matters of my, I'm in media. I've heard the, the operators talking about data, but in tourism, these, had, uh, these uh, uh, touristy places like Buindi, there is no network. And I can tell you, if you put network there, data, data which is consumed by a whole village, a whole trading center, can be consumed by one tourist. We need to market Uganda, because when you are doing your statistics, trying to get where to put the network, you say animals don't use the net phones. So you count people in the villages, in the trading centers. You forget these areas of where tourists visit. Uh, I can tell you, Kigezi, we have Buindi, and 70% of tourism revenue come from Kigezi. So I think, Kigezi, we are not getting our fair share in terms of infrastructure. Much as we are here on ICT, but also the roads, because 70% of tourism revenue comes from Buindi, but the roads in Kigezi are the worst. But, but this is not for you. For you, let's concentrate on connectivity and internet. So I think that's one of my, my question. Then another question, also because I've seen that you are a person here. There has been an IFRIS elephant in this room. You force us to go to IFRIS, but we can't even make calls when we are in those areas. How do you force me to go to IFRIS when I cannot even make a call? So it is very important we think about uh, internet, affordable internet, and uh, 
for the tourists, they don't mind actually about the price. What they need is 5G, 4G, and above. So this is a low-hanging fruit for the uh, MTN Airtel. If you could uh, venture into that, then we shall be good to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. I'm going to receive only two people. I'm going to receive the, the Deputy Speaker and uh, that lady there so that the Minister and the ED can respond to some of those questions before they leave. The others, we shall rec receive you later. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Once again, Mujshawna and Ian, Deputy Speaker Kavale. Uh, my question, actually, my concern is about online uh, money lending systems. As UCC, uh, we have a problem. To enable the structural and how the system is built, ah, masimu gitu, bura tshara, bura tshaba interested ya igurumunonga, kandi bura tshend. Uh, especially the generation whereby you find toine uh, sente zira mara kuhuka wa shanga kasi mubali kubuza ongo barasa kuwa roni wa jaroni ejo kuwa mara no kujiria wa shanga bundo tarasa kuzisha shiraje olinkomo bank sezi nizaro bajo shanga obuli bu systemu zivuga masi mu vuga kule mesa no kupona roni kuli kandi bora han bora shaba na interest ya igurumunong how is the government uh, willing to help us and reject such, such online lending systems. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can give the microphone to that lady there. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the UCC for having conducted this uh, week's activities in this region. But through you, Minister, I would like to, uh, to request that UCC opens offices in parts of the country because as, as local people, we do not understand what UCC is, we do not understand their mandate, and we don't know what they do. We have heard them over the radio, but we do not fully understand their role. I am actually surprised to see that Bank of Uganda also partners with UCC. So can we have uh, a literacy of what UCC does and how it can benefit us as local people in the last part of the country in Kigezi? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to request if the ED can answer some of these questions and then finally the minister before they leave. Thank you very much. Uh, there were four uh, concerns which we have raised. Uh, one pertaining to counterfeit. I think the Honorable Minister will uh, handle that because it's beyond our legislative ladder. Um, but I'll address myself to the three connectivity in the parks. Yes, true. True, true, true. Connectivity in the parks is a very big problem. Uh, but you know very well that you have. Uh, reformed our licensing obligations, uh, asking, obligating the operators to design their networks uh, um, uh, depending on geographical coverage as opposed to population coverage. And by the 25th of June, uh, I think next year, 30th June of next year, they must have covered 90% of the country. Uh, including forests and lakes. We are monitoring this because there are a few challenges here and there which we are discussing with them. But uh, despite all that, uh, something on which we may not have any compromise, the 90% the coverage. So I'm sure we are coming. And again, in addition to that, under UCC we have the Universal Access Fund where we have some money which we can use to uh, roll out uh, network together with the operators in those areas, especially to tourist areas. So far, we have allocated the money to about 68 uh, towers in those hard to reach areas. Uh, in our strategic plan of five years, we are, uh, want to cover close to 150 towers in those areas. And we are putting a lot of emphasis to tourist uh, uh, areas 
and we have already shared in the conversation, we have shared this with the operators to put more emphasis on tourism because, as all of us know, tourism generates uh, foreign exchange for the country, employs uh, a lot of people of our country, brands, uh, our country. So this is an area where we should put a lot of emphasis, more so the, the, the windy area. I know this because my other heart in the private sector so much involved in it. So I have a conflict of interest, but this is a positive conflict of interest. Positive conflict of interest, not negative. Because I have also interest in this, in this space, which employs a lot of people, which brings a lot of revenue to our government, hence which really help us to control our macro e economy. So it's very, very important. So thank you very much for raising that, uh, engineer. You actually, you are preaching to the, to the converted. We, we, we are with you in this. High interest, uh, high interest uh, is not only in the mobile space. I think the president has been even talking about high interest with the loan sharks. I don't think operators want to be equated to, to, to be loan sharks. That's not, that's not a brand you, you'd want to have. Uh, but uh, when we look at your interest, really, uh, if somebody called you loan sharks in the future, I don't think you'll complain because it really is high. But again, uh, the, the financial services are now regulated by Bank of Uganda. We are happy that uh, Bank of Uganda uh, are here. Uh, I think they should say something about, uh, about, about this. And, uh, but obviously, now as a, a citizen also, not as ED, the government has put a lot of money which we can access also. Before you go for interest rate of 4% per month, have you engaged the, your community to see how you can get money from Emioga, from PDM, from the local circles? Uh, for my friends who are investing in big business, uh, UDB, uh, and other areas where government has put a lot of money, but since the Honorable Minister is here, he can address himself to, to that to show you other areas where cheap money ha has been put, uh, uh, which you can use uh, to do your... Uh, yeah. Actually, <laughs> sometimes I, I laugh. You, you, uh, somebody is borrowing money from you. Say, can you lend me uh, 100000 I'll pay you tomorrow. Then you say, okay, I'll give you a say, but don't send on this number. Uh, don't send on this number. This is the man who is promising to pay you tomorrow. But uh, he's fleecing somebody he borrowed from. That's why he's saying, you know, to send on that number because he already has a loan, a, a loan there. So sometimes the, the consumers also, we can put all the blame. Actually, I think we shall have a session. We shall have a session in, in the 15th, in the 15th session of the consumer parliament. We shall have a session, the issues we have also with the consumers. Because we have listened to you 14 times, all right? 14 times. It's you to us. Though next year, yes, we shall not uh, encroach on your space, but we shall create another space where we shall also tell you the issues we have, <laughs> we have with the consumers. Uh -huh. The issue we have with the, with, uh, even the regulators with the radios, with what? The, the callers on radios, so, so that we, we, we make the ground level. Don't you think so? Yeah, that's when we can really uh, handle this issue in a more uh, systematic way. Um, opening offices, we are coming, ma'am. We already have offices in Mbarara. Our regional manager for Mbarara is here, engineer is, is here. This place is handled by Mbarara. We have another office in Masindi, which handles Ibunyoro and uh, other places, the greater western part. We have another office in Gulu. Uh, we have another office in Imbale. Of course, we have our headquarters in Kampala. We are thinking of going to Karamoja first, Moroto, then West Nile. Uh, obviously, Mbarara to Chigezi, I think, a distance. We'll look into this. I think Chigezi might need a, a separate office. We know why it is important really to come nearer to, to, the, uh, to, to the people. 
Honorable Minister, sir, can I invite you to, uh, to, to, to respond to some of the issues? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the comments and the questions, and I want to thank the ED for responding to most of the issues which have been raised. My brother and friend, friend Kanso Mwema was talking about the counterfeits, and uh, we entirely agree with you on that challenge of counterfeits, and uh, everything possible should be done to make sure that we minimize or eliminate counterfeits because they have the challenges which you have raised, including health challenges. Now, we have the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, which has a cardinal responsibility of ensuring that whatever we consume has been checked and is confirmed to meet the standards and the counterfeits or things which don't meet the standards should not be allowed on the market, ranging from these electronic devices, the food we consume, the items we buy in the shops. And as a government, we are trying to strengthen the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. There are still weaknesses, but we are strengthening it. They are even setting up a unit that is going to handle devices in this area so that we get experts and we ensure that whatever comes into the country has been checked. One day I was in China. I visited a, a factory in China, and I asked the Chinese, why do you send us cheap things in Uganda? Because when you go to America, you find very high-quality items, but made in China. You go to European shops, they are high-quality items made in China. Then you come to Africa, you find raw quality items from China. So I asked them, when the southern part of China, Shenzhen region, and they said, no, it is you Africans, you are the ones who come and you want cheap things. So they deliberately manufacture cheap and less quality things for the Africans, because that they told me off in my face. My face. But uh, as government, we are trying to strengthen the UNBS and the other agencies which check the quality because Ugandans shouldn't be allowed to consume things which are harmful to them and which cause problems. So we are working with the UNBS to put in place a unit within the UNBS that has specialized technocrats that can help check most of these items which come in. Uh, on phones, sometimes the people go outside and they smuggle phones into the country and they avoid being checked. You see, you can have your hand luggage, you put in the 20 phones. If you are a VIP like me, you reach a table, you pass through the VIP lounge. And you are a and the other agencies probably. But now you have introduced the, the checking arrangement. But especially in the past, people would just come in. But maybe even me as a minister, I might carry my bag and say, honorable, oh, you just pass. Because not all of us probably have the highest levels of integrity. So, but through UCC, you correct me, UCC, you are now procuring technology, especially for phones and these devices, that if you bring it, you bring a phone into the country and has it been checked, after some time, it will stop working. It will stop working, then you will present it, and then the system will have to check it. So we are putting all sorts of measures to address that issue of counterfeits. Since you raised the issue of some of these counterfeit products having harass concerns or harass challenges, which is right, there has also been a question where people fear these milongoti the musts, that if they put a must near my house, would I get cancer, would I get diseased? I just want to assure you 
that no, uh, let me not be a victim of what I said. I should not use a lot of science. Uh, the radiation which comes out of these masts is what we call non-ionizing radiation. Okay. We do not allow technologies like these masks which would emit something that can be a health concern to the people. So do not fear the masks which we are mounting, even if it is close to your house, they are within safety levels. Uh, I'm a professional doctor. I'm a professional doctor. I'm a professional doctor. I'm a professional doctor. i Fred Muema, we take note of the concerns and everything should be done especially by government to ensure that we protect Ugandans and we are trying our level best.